Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 122 and 123. Problem number 122, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at it. Before we actually do problem number 122, it's important. It is vital, it is crucial that you have watched number 65, 91, and 111. If you have not watched these three problems first, pause this video, stop this video, and make sure you watch. Just search for Algebra Word Problem 65, and the video will pop right up, and then 91 and 111. Because this problem that we're dealing with uses the concept and the things that we learned in the first three problems. Let's take a look at it. It says that we have a it says that digits of a two-digit integers are reverse. So we have a two-digit integer, let's say 57. What do we do with 57? We're going to reverse the digits. It becomes 75. It becomes 75. And we are told that as a result, the new integer that we obtain differs from the original one by 36. For example, if you take 57 and subtract it from 75, you will see that we will not get 36. We'll get we'll get 18. They differ by 18, not 36. Here we are told that as a result, when we reverse the digits, the new digit, new integer that we get differs the original one by 36. The question is, by how much do the two digits differ? For example, in this scenario, in the scenario of 75, the two digits differ by 2, 7, and 5. They're not asking us, what is that two-digit integer? That's not the question here. The question here is not, what is that two-digit integer? The question simply is, why, by how much do the two digits differ? The very first thing that you need to understand, which is something that we learned in problem number 65 and 91, is how do we express a two-digit number? How do we express the notion, the idea, the concept of a two-digit integer in the language of algebra? For example, say for example, for example, if you're talking about if you're talking about two-digit integers being 75, and if you're going to say that x equals 7 and y equals do we express the 75, do we express the notion of 75 as xy? The answer of course is no. Answer is no because in the language of algebra, xy means 7 times 5, which is 35, which is not what we are trying to express. We are trying to express the notion of 75, not 35. So the question is, in the language of algebra, how do we express 75 if x happens to be 7 and y happens to be 5? It's very simple. The 7 here that you see here is called the 10 digit. It's called tens digit. And 5 here is called the unit digit. The unit digit, not digits. The unit digit. Why is it called tens digit? It's called tens digit because that tells you how many, how many, how many tens we have. In 75, 75 is made up of 7 tenths, which is why it's called 75. 75, it turns out, 75, it turns out, is made up of, is made up of 7 tenths and 5 ones. That tells you, the unit digit tells you how many ones we have, and the 10 digit tells you how many tens we have. We have 7 tenths and 5 ones. And now we know that x equals 7. x equals 7, so we substitute here x equals 7. The 7 is the x here, so this is x times 10 plus y times 1. And this is how we express, this is how we will express 75 in the language of algebra, except we do not leave it like this. We don't say x times 10, we say 10x plus and y times 1, y times 1 is just y. There is your 75. This is the idea of two-digit number expressed in the language of algebra. This is our two-digit number. And what do we do with it? We are to reverse the digits. So let's first write down the number here. The two-digit number happens to be, let's, let's, let's start from top here. We're going to write it as 10x plus y. So this is our original number. What are we, do, what are we to do with it? We're supposed to reverse the digits. 75 is going to become 57. In other words, so whatever the unit digit was becomes the 10 digit, whatever the 10 digit was becomes the unit digit. So here we'll have 10 times y because y was the unit digit. It becomes, it, it appears in the, in the place of 10 digits and 
whatever, however many tens we had here, whatever was a ten digit appears as a unit digit. Can you tell what mistake I just made here? I made a mistake inadvertently. We're not supposed to add the two numbers. We take our original two digit numbers, we reverse the digits, and then it tells you, then it tells you that they differ. The difference between the two quantity is 36. They differ. We have to take their difference. They differ by 36. Let me replace the markers, see if I can find a better marker because this one is almost dying. Hopefully this. That's it, we're done. The rest is very simple. The rest is, is just a one step process. 10x, well let's open the parenthesis. So we have 10x plus y. When we open the parenthesis we get 10y minus 10y and then minus x equals 36. And then we have 10x minus x is going to be 9x and minus 10y and a y is going to give us minus 10y, uh, minus 9y rather equals 36. Divide the entire equation by 9 when we find that x minus y equals 4. There you go. That's what they were looking for. They're not asking us what is the two digit integer. The question simply was by how much do the two digits differ. It turns out the two digits differ by 4. So now the question is so what is the two digit integer? To which the answer is we do not know. There is no way of finding it out because we have only one equation and we have two unknowns. The unit digit the 10 digit, rather the 10 digit and the unit digit, we have two unknowns, only one equation is what is what, what we are given here. There is no way to figure out what is the two digit number. However, we could discuss all the possible scenarios that exist. Let's do that. Let's look at all the possible scenarios of a two digit number so that they differ by four. Let's do it on the top and you will see that in every single instance when we reverse the digits, the difference between the original number and the new number that we op uh, obtain is always going to be 36. Always, always, always going to be 36 as long as the two digits differ by 4. Let's, look at, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the possible scenarios. Let's take a look at possible scenarios on the top. How many possible scenarios are there? Well, we'll find out. Let's we'll start with 1. Let's start logically, okay? Let's we'll start with 1. So we have 1 and 5, they differ by 4. Then we have 2 and 6, 2 and 6 differ by 4. You see the difference between the two digits is 4. Then we will have 3 and 7, then we will have 4 and 8, and then 5 and 9. In all cases, you will see that the two digits differ by 4. And if you reverse the digit, it becomes 51, it becomes 62, it becomes 73, and it becomes 84, and it becomes 95. And in all of these five scenarios, in all of these five scenarios, you will see that they differ by exactly 36. We pick any one of them, for example, 73 minus 37, 73 minus 37, 13 minus 7 is going to be a 6, and 6 minus 3 is going to be 3. In all of these five possible scenarios, when you reverse the digits, the difference between the original number and the new number is always going to be 36. That was it. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more problem. An age problem, a different kind of problem, problem dealing with the ages of two people. We need the room, so we have to raise everything. But make sure you watch number 65, 91, and 111. It says the sum of the edges of A and B, this is 123. Sum of the edges of A and B is 46. We are further told that five years from now, five years from now, A will be, A will be seven times, seven times as old as B. Question simply is, what are their, what are their current ages? So even if, even if the problem had not said current ages, even if the problem has not said the word current, even if they had simply said what are their ages, it's understood they're looking for their current age. Because had it been a different time period, they would have said it. They would have asked, had they, had they been looking for a different time period, the problem would have specified. They would have said, how old are they going to be in five years' time, or how old are they going to be 20 years from now, or how old were they 10 years ago. It would have said that, it, it would have specified the time period. When the time period is not specified, it's understood that they're looking for present. What are their ages? Let's do it, shall we? 
first thing first, first thing we need to do as always, as always in any word problem is to define your variable, your unknowns. The two unknowns that we're dealing with here, A is age and B is age, let's define them. So let, let small a be A's age and let small b be B's age. There we go, we have defined our variables or have we? Is this, is this enough? Is this, the right, uh, is this the right work? The answer is no. This is not enough. This is, this, is, this is very vague. This is very ambiguous. This is open to interpretation. Because what we have said is that let this quantity be A's age, let this quantity be B's age. But when the problem deals with more than one time period, we have to say what these variables are supposed to represent. Are these supposed to represent their ages five years from now? Or are these supposed to represent their current ages? Let's define it. We have to say that. Let small a be a's. Let, let small a be a's current age, and let small b be b's current age. Now we have done it. This is this is the better job. Now we can start our process. Uh, what do we know? We know that right now the sum of their ages is 46. So that's a very simple equation. The sum of their ages is 46. That's our first equation. That's very straightforward, simple. So that's today, that's today. Now let's look at five years from now. Five years from now is the second time period we're gonna look at. What happens five years from now? Well, if A is A years old today, five years from now is gonna be A plus five. If Mr. B is B years old today, if B is to represent his current age, then five years from now, he should be B plus five. So far, so good, very straightforward. Now, what sort of relationship exists between these two quantities, or rather, to be more precise, what sort of relationship will exist, not does exist, but what sort of relationship will exist between these two quantities five years hence? Well, the problem tells us what sort of relationship will exist five years from now. Five years from now, A, we are told, is gonna be seven times as old as B. This is gonna be the B's age five years from now. If you take seven times this quantity, that's how old A is. That's it, we're done. The rest is very straightforward. Let's do it together. The rest is very straightforward. What can we do here? Let's open the parenthesis. So first, here, here we are told that A plus B equals 46. Let's use from here the quantity for A. So this implies, this implies that A would have to equal 46 minus B. From here we get A would have to be 46 minus B if A plus B is 46. If A plus B is 46, then A would have to be 46 minus B. We're going to put this value of A in here. So we get 46 minus B plus 5 equals 7 times B and 7 times 5, which is 35. We have a B here, we have a 7B here, let's add B to both sides. That B is going to drop out. 46 plus 5 is 51 equals 8B plus 35. Let's subtract 35 from both sides. And 8B would equal 8B would equal 11 minus 5 is going to be 6. 4 minus 3 is going to be 1. 8B equals 16. And therefore B, I don't know how, how far down you can see, and therefore B would equal 2. B would equal 2. If B equals 2, then from this equation implies that A would have to equal 46 minus 2 or 44. All you have to do now at the very end is to verify our answer. We are claiming based on our work that we see, that, that based, on the work, based on the work that we're showing here, we are claiming that A is 44 years old today and B is two years old today. Let's verify it by looking at what happens five years from now. Five years from now, according to the problem, A is supposed to be seven times as old as B. Let's look at it on the top. So five years from now, five years from now, a, we are claiming is 44 years old. If he's 44 years old, five years from now, he's going to be 49. And B, 
we are claiming is two years old today. So if it's two years old, five years from now, it's going to be seven years old. Is, is, is A's age, according to the problem, problem told us that five years from now, A is supposed to be seven times as old as B. Is age is equal to seven times B's age? The answer is yes. Seven times seven is 49. It turns out that our, our work is correct. Why not?